Welcome to the first set of videos and the CGS series looking at the angle trisection solution. We are going to discuss about the angle trisection problem and its solutions in the domain of classical geometry. We can perhaps paste out our story by looking at two important definitions for the terms difficult and impossible or something not possible. By definition, Difficult may be considered as something needing much effort or skills to accomplish, deal with, and understand. On the other hand, impossible or not possible may mean something that does not exist, happen, is unable to be done at human capacity, performed or effected, and so on. You can add any other, any other adjective that suits the description. So then why do we talk of impossibilities? We are here under this presentation to see the reasons as why the one cells proof of 18 that 7 is generally wrong and not valid to prove or to stand in the geometric world and say that something cannot be done. Based on the definition of impossible, if we begin from that point, it is clear that to prove an impossibility we need at least to show two things. One, the problem that the particular problem does not exist and it cannot be done at human thinking. To justify those, these two aspects, in terms of, for example, the inability to do it, one needs an infinite capacity of knowledge to show that no other human can do it, or knowledge of the entire universe. To show that something does not exist is quite so difficult, simply because if anything is defined in human knowledge, then how comes one can claim it does not exist? From that simple definitive description of impossible, it is clear that any proof of impossibility in science will always be wrong, no matter how strong it appears, how valid it looks like, it will just be invalid if we look at it from all dimensions. Therefore, as we dive into this presentation, we are confident that we are just working out problems that have been difficult to many generations of mathematics and science. The solution is possible. It's so difficult to prove an impossibility. To sail us through the remaining part of this presentation, we take a look at this paper. I've just shown this in the introductory bit of the general series. The article is called The Angle Trisection Solution. And if you have not gotten a copy of this, please type into any internet search engine The Angle Trisection Solution. You can retrieve a PDF copy of the material. It's an open access the paper. I will also not into detailed look at this, describe what is happening in the paper. But the objective was to refute one cell statement that the angle trisection problem cannot be cracked down by humans. And any attempt to resolve it would mean resolving this cubic or algebraic cubic equation. This is where the problem comes in from. This is algebra, not geometry. It has to be remembered that there are conditions governing these kind of classical geometric problems. One, they solely should be sought using only two tools, a classical compass and an marked straight edge. Other restrictions stem from this general condition. There must there should be no measurement simply because an marked straight edge would not have scale, arithmetic is not allowed in proof, and then lastly we need to have a finite number of steps in any pro proposed algorithm as solution to the problem. A simple question then arises, does the algebraic proof of the impossibility justify all those conditions or restrictions? The answer is simply no. We understand that based on the definition of the terms I've just given, difficult and impossible, the algebraic proof of the impossibility did prove inability. It is not human's inability, it was someone's inability. Therefore, get ready to think. Crack your mind. If you are not satisfied with the solutions I'm going to expose or expose in this article, you can also come up with your own. Things are possible. We have the freedom to explore a plain figure. Talk of this figure I'm showing here, the plain M. On the plain M we have CAB. There are so many elemental quantities in here and the concept of reducing these elemental quantities 
into useful materials or objects is not coming from Alex in the first time, it has been there. In physics, for example, Archimedes derived the laws of flavor based on the same approach, geometrical approach, and so many other things have been done employing the concept of extracting these elemental quantities, objects like line segments, curves, and so on, and their properties have brought very excellent results, or impressive results, if not excellent. So go to this copy, look at the proofs, the methods from chapter 3, the description of the idea, the symbol constructions, and the proof ever have come across. The results displayed here have been produced using the GeoGebra. GeoGebra is one of the dynamic geometry packages. It's designed very well mimicking the assumptions at some point mimicking the assumptions of Euclidean geometry. So it's good we use it and get some approximations of the results we are generating from the logics we employ in uh, generating the algorithms. But again, you need to remember, measurements is not just part of proof. These software still have limitations because if you look at, for example, from this figure, and I will just discuss in the next section, everything here is presented in terms of coordinates. For example, point A, this is the point A, the coordinate is 3, 1, B, 3, 6, 1. It is not certainly sure that is the point. And we cannot depend on coordinates so as to give surety into arguments that we are correct. Otherwise, any other argument, if we have to be that much practical, any other argument will just be wrong, that is not practical. Again, another important observation one would make after going through this work, the described construction steps, they all have been reduced into the three postulates of, of Euclidean geometry. And therefore, no geometric uh, aspect is violated. Everything is given, no measurements, no arithmetic, just some two conditions. This method only works in the scale of 0 degrees to 30. There is also another condition, not the normal way we trisect a line, as you'll see from the last part of the last figure, figure 17. We need to learn how to trisect this line substanding the anchor at point A, for example. We do not just normally do the way we trisect lines. There is a condition you need to bisect to, to, to have a point at the center here, and this point would form the first set of curves or circles for trisecting these lines, for example, C prime B. It's not the normal way we do the trisection. So there's no adjustment of any kind, just direct procedure giving the results. Have a copy of this material for yourself. I hope you enjoy looking at the results. You will find out that, as described in the work, the angle trisection problem is a classical problem of compass and straight edge as it appears in the ancient Greek mathematics. Its definition requires one to construct an anchor equal to one third of a given anchor using only two tools. I have just said use of an unmarked straight edge and compass. These are the classical tools of geometry. And the aim of this presentation is to refute the algebraic impossibility statement, simply because we have seen from the definition of impossible to the application part of plane geometry, it's so difficult to prove an impossibility. And these have just been difficult problems to many generations of humans, but they are not impossible. Do not believe in impossibles. Anyone thinking of proving an impossibility no matter the conditions governing a particular problem, must always be wrong at the end. Now, based on the definition of an arbitrary anchor, I insist very much, emphatically talk about measurements. One would adjust or stretch the GeoGebra software into around 15 decimal places to see the accuracy of the generated solution. That is not acceptable. Two, to construct one third of any given ankle, we do not need to measure the ankle. As you will observe from the provided constructions in the paper I've just displayed, 
the method works for all angles, whether whole lump angles, non whole lump angles, those angles multiples of 15, and any other angle that is not a multiple of 15. The bottom line is we do not need to determine or we do not have to determine the size of the angle given for examination. And in terms of Euclidean definitions, an angle is defined as the point of intersection of two rays or between two rays. This is where we get an angle. This quantity is what we call the angle. It has to be defined between two rays. What of other cases like 0 and 360? In the paper you'll find I've called those singular angles. They are ways in terms of algebra and geometry used in resolving the problems. I've just described them in the paper. Please go and read details about the resolution of resecting the singular angles. So this is a clear interpretation or look or picture of an habitual angle in plane geometry or on a plane figure. Plane means just two dimensions, vertical and horizontal. This is exactly what should be presented and done in whether you are proving it to be impossible or possible. We must work on the confines of the conditions governing the problems. We will then depend on some dynamic softwares or geometric packages to help us display the results we have just seen as we will be performing the described or the provided constructions in the article. And for that case we need to use a geometry package called the GeoGebra. I am very much interested in showing the reasons with which we should not entirely depend on GeoGebra as the only source of or trigonometry as the only way to prove that things are correct. Simply because when you go to specific values like coordinates, if I need to get a specific coordinate and to work out from that, that's the way or the only way I can or one of the ways I would introduce the use of trigonometry and I'll always be wrong. Proofs in geometry have been based on quantities, comparisons, comparison of quantities to similar size or magnitudes were said to be equal or commensurate. Those which did not have equal magnitudes, they were not commensurate. Those are the terms used in the Euclid's books of elements, and they are involving the first three postlets of practical geometry. This is exactly what I'm going to be exposing through this presentation. Point A has come at this coordinate. I'm not very, very certainly sure this is the exact position in this software. So this just gives approximations. However, cleaner result may be, it's just an approximation. What matters is the construction involved and the proofs provided. So we do not need to work entirely from this case of application. Let's understand geometry, support logics, and theoretical foundations of any described construction. Now we have the geometric construction of 48 using the Alexis method. This is another different approach which involves the construction for the whole number angles. I have employed the method generating 48 and I performed its trisection and here is how the results appeared. The proof involved using comparison of quantities. If for example point J A B describes 16 degree angle, I needed to stop this three times along the curve to give me 48. If I moved or copied or through geometric transformations mapped point J into point L, I also needed, it's very clear I need, I must have made an angle of 16 degrees at L A B, sorry A B prime. B prime in this case is an image of this point B about point A. Sorry, let me go back. Now the contention comes in here. This point is on the circumference of the initial circle. Sorry again. The point L is on the circumference of the initial circle. How then does it come to be the radius L? It's well placed. That one I was very certain in looking at it. The radius LA is not equal to AB. AB was 6. AL is 5. Point. There are some, there's some error 0. Point something. On the other side, I also drew the line according to the condition given in Achimedes look at trisection using marked straight head. The same approach can be achieved using geometric transformations provided we have some 
good algorithm performing that or performing the task. So I employ the same technique and the radius AL is mapped into LM. You look here and observe ML is 6 up to 0.1 somewhere in the 15th decimal place. These variations shows you the difference in all the approximate positions in terms of coordinates as I just stated. My method displays this kind of results if you employ the GeoGebra or another software and do the measurements. This is the problem with measurements. We cannot exactly do what we call exactness. You know that I do not think it exists in terms of science because no machine is ideal, no model is 100% accurate. Those are problems we are facing. But for, for applicability and the practical purposes, the results are very helpful, useful, and very nice. You will realize that most of the methods I'm going to show here have hit the accuracy of over 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3. That's quite essential, simply because in terms of pi, work with up to 1 over a thousandth. Desmos. Next, we look at the construction and trisection. Here, it's not the construction. I really meant it meant trisection of 45. I needed to employ the same technique in trisection of 45, construction and trisection of 45, as I've just constructed and trisected 48. I needed to show the, the same thing. The initial radius is 6. From point A to point B, we see 6 units. AG should also be 6. And so too is GH should be 6. But you are getting here actually very less than the one I've displayed. This is going at, there is an error of 0 0.000003 up to the 15th decimal place. Mine was 0 0.001 up to the 15th decimal place. Header 1, a variation of 0, 01 something. So you wonder, this is exactly one of the anchors, the base anchors, like that's anchor GH. B prime is 15, G A B prime is also 15, and G sorry C A B is 45. If we had the base anchors in the triangle H G A being exactly 15, why the variation from six centimeters? There are more limitations on, um, on use of this geometric dynamic package softwares. And we should not entirely depend on measurements. The same way, Euclid did not like the use of the protractor while de developing the concept of anchors. Why? It is not clear if, for example, in my scale, this is assuming this is my point 30 degrees, how sure will I be that point hangs at exactly 30 degrees on a protractor? When Euclid was developing his concepts and theories or theorems, Babylonians were still using the protractor and the sexagesimal systems, but he avoided that. How then comes one who talk of exactness and not the logic in construction? People are refuting in terms of statement. It will be so poor for one to believe in impossibility while they know it cannot be done. It, it, it's so difficult to prove an impossibility. Those who are interested in learning the realities join this team join us let's work together enjoy reading these videos i hope the tutorials will open you up that is it about the trisection of these particular angles construction of 48 if i may go back construction and trisection of 48 i, re I left the word trisection in the topic or the heading sorry and the other one is construction and trisection of 45 we have seen the variations in the results this could appear very clean like 15 15 but what about the leg. If the legs HG was equal to GA, since HG sustains the anchor GAB prime, then why the variation? In terms of trigonometry, that is it. Why the variation? It cannot be explained why it is not exactly six. These are these are the abnormalities. We are saying it's very difficult to get exactness for those talking of even if you go to one millionth decimal place you will not get exactness. So difficult in terms of the models we are having. Having said that, we look at the completion and summary of 
the, this introductory discussion about the angle trisection solution. The angle trisection problem is solvable using the Alex's method and it will work or it works in the confines of the conditions governing the problem. I have just shown the trisection of 48 and we'll perform other more constructions as just illustrations. We'll do three videos or four videos on the same. The impossibility statement is not geometrically valid. I've just pointed out that. And lastly, I would like you to subscribe into this channel so as to view the next four videos in the angle trisection problem and solutions. Thank you very much for viewing.